All right, guys. So now that we have configured our hosted UI, let's integrate to our application. Now, if I go to Amplify Documentation and Authentication, this one, you should see using Amazon Cognito hosted UI. And we have already followed the first part in order to how to set up the Cognito client app. And afterwards, it's time to configure those configuration in our application. So they have given an example here. So basically what they are doing here is they are creating an object with the configuration like the domain name and the scope. Now these are the authorized scoped in OO2. Basically we say, okay, we need phone, email, profile, this information from an authenticated user. And then we have to specify the redirect sign in and redirect sign out. Now these are exact values that we have configured in our user pool and the response type. We thought of going ahead with code. We can use code or token here, but code is much secure. And as for the options, so we'll turn this advanced security off for now. Copy this. So let's go to Visual Studio Code. So here am I at main.ts file, which is here. So in the previous hosting part, we have already configured the Amplify here. So let me do one other thing. I will just hit a couple of enters here and I will paste in that OAuth object and let's configure these domains. So our domain, as we have recorded in the text editor, it should be up to this part. Let me copy it. So remove the HTTPS part. For the scope, let's keep them as it is and redirect sign in. So let's go to our AWS console into our user pool and their app client settings. And this is our callback URL or redirect URL. So both sign out and sign in URLs are the same. So let me just copy one of these and come back here and let's paste it here. For sign out also, let's paste it here. We can change this value when we are doing the release. So it's basically our main domain. So this is now testing. Okay, response type code and advanced security. Let's set it to uh, false. Okay, so we have this object now with our configuration. So now we need to import auth from Amplify as well. So in our import statement here, let me just put a comma and add auth as well. So now let's configure this authentication part with our new configuration object. I hit a couple of enters here and paste it in. So it's basically auth.configure. Then for auth key, pass our auth key, this particular object. All right, so that's it. So that's about configuring the authentication part in our Angular application. So let's add some UI part as well, shall we? So let me quickly go to package.json and let me see if we have installed any bootstrap or oh, font or some, it's not there. So let's quickly take a integrated terminal and I'm going to install bootstrap. Bootstrap and font awesome for awesome fonts. And I will hit enter. Let's wait until this is installed. Okay, these two are now installed. Now let's refer bootstrap and font awesome in our Angular application. So in order to do that, you need to go to angular.json file or you can find it here. So this is main configurations file in Angular. So under styles and script, we have to refer bootstrap and font awesome. So styles, let's add those relative paths. Let me just copy and paste them here. Now these links are related to bootstrap. So you can refer node modules, which is here, right? And then go to bootstrap folder, which is here, dist folder and CSS. And then you have to import the grid bootstrap reboot and bootstrap CSS. So here I've added the font awesome link as well for the CSS file. And under scripts, I linked bootstrap.js as well. Okay, so this should be it. And now let's add a new component for the navigation so we can have a login link there up on the top. So when someone clicks it, we'll handle that click request to redirect to the hosted UI domain. 
Okay, let's take the integrated terminal. Let me clear the screen and type ngGC for generate component. Let's call our component now. And dash test spec false to not include any test files and hit enter. So that will create our navigation component here inside our source directory. It's not there yet. Let me refresh it. There you go. We have the navigation component. I will go to app.component.html and remove this default content. And I'm going to refer the now component. So how can we do that? Let me go to now and go to now component.ts and here's the selector. I'll copy it in and come here and paste it as a directive. App slash now. Okay. Now it is referring our now component. So we can change the HTML here. So let's add a navigation from Bootstrap. And let's go to Bootstrap and find a navigation component. I will click Get Started. And under Component, I should find the now bars here. And let's copy in one of these now bars. So I like this blue color one. So let's copy this in. Okay. And let me change the CSS a little bit and let me add this ng expand lg tag as well. And for the content, let's go back to the documentation. And I like this content. So let me just copy in this part and paste it in here. And let's see how it looks like, shall we? I will open up a integrated terminal and type ng serve. Oops, so I got an error cannot find the name buffer. So this is basically I couldn't do one small configuration. So let me go to tsconfig app.json. So you can find it here under source tsconfig app.json. And for the compiler options, we have to pass node. So compile it with node. So we have to add that. And let me clear the screen, type ng serve again. Okay, now we are out of errors. So let me click the local storage 4200 and see our now bar is appearing. Very nice, it's there. So let's change this text a little bit and we'll have the login here to the right side. I will go to now component.html. So instead of this weird text, I will type eBuy and home features pricing. Let me delete this bottom span and I will create another UL and let's have it to the right side. So I am renaming MR to ML for margin left and let's add the login. I will remove these two additional allies and keep only one and here let me add login and save it and let's see if it is working. Yes, now it's fine. Okay, so now let's attach a click handler for login. So let me replace href with click. I will wrap it around parentheses to make it an event. And let me name our function on login click. Right. I will copy the function name and go to our now component.ts file. And there I will add a new function on login click. And now we need to redirect to our hosted UI. So how can we do that? Let's create a variable or maybe a constant called URL. So this is our redirection URL. It should be const. And for this URL, let me go to my note editor and I will copy in our hosted UI redirect URL, the complete redirect URL and paste it in. And then let's redirect using window.location.assign and the URL. So let's see if this works. Now guys, I will add this code into a GitHub repo so you guys can also refer this. So let's go to our local host and try to click login. Yes, it did redirect indeed. Very nice. Let's create an account and test it. Let me sign up for the username Manoj test and a mock email test.com test password as well and let me just sign up 
okay and it says it has sent an email to testattest.com which i don't actually have an email as such so let's go to our user pool and let's activate the user from here so let me go to email and search for test at test.com and here's the user manoj test i will click on it and there's this button confirm user click that all right so i confirmed him from the back end and now if i go to sign in page let me click back button and click sign in again here for the username i think i had this one and password yep and that works so it has successfully redirected me back to localhost 4200 and with the authentication code so now what amplify will do behind the scene is it will take this code and connect with our user pool and get the access token and id token and save it in the local storage in our browser let's test that if it is the case i will go to inspect element and in the application tab here if i go to local storage here you have it access token id token refresh token all set up so that's really convenient for us now amplify will do automatic refreshment if the token is expired so everything will be handled by amplify okay so now we have a user context and as well as all these tokens so how do you proceed if you need user email and other user attributes we can use amplify apis to request user session information and if we want to talk to our backend services we can use amplify apis again so behind the scene amplify will use this access id these tokens to send along with our request and do iam authorization at our service level so let's check that in our upcoming videos so i hope up to now everything is clear if you guys have any questions please put them in the comment section i will do my best to answer them so thanks guys